Hi everyone, welcome back into the Academy here at Chesterfield Golf Club. Lovely to have you along for another video with myself, Warren Bennett. We've got Trev on the floor, keeping nice and quiet. It's a bit sleepy today. He's got his tennis ball there. I'm not going to touch it just in case he gets too excited. So he's not feeling too enthusiastic about this video, as you might see down there, but let's keep it that way and hopefully you will. And this one's all about release and there's different types of release. There's a hand and arm release. There's a body release and there's a leg and lower half release. Um, a lot of people who come through the academy, which mainly are club golfers, I feel they need to improve their hand and arm release. And this video is about that because a lot of people have too much rotation of their top half and that neglects the way they use their hands and arm. This one's gonna be the opposite. This one's gonna be the way you move your hands and arms and what's called supination. You might have heard or come across that statement. It was, I don't know, I don't know this for a fact, but it was talked about in Ben Hogan's five lessons, supination and pronation. Basically, supination is the hand just doing this. I'll just roll my sleeve up there. In golf, it's, it's the hand just going from rolling. It's this rolling mechanism we've got in our wrists. It's basically the whole arm, really. It's the forearm rotation is the flashy word for it. You don't have to be that flash. You don't have to talk about it. I don't normally talk about all forearm rotation, but that's actually what's happening. It's the wrist just turning. And that's what you need to encourage more because what I see a lot of people who, who slice, because a lot of people who slice have an in, out to in path, so they have to kind of keep the club face from not rolling, otherwise it's gonna go left, left. So it's, and people who cut across it and have a release with their wrist, as you can see, that's got this cupping action, kind of does two things. This cupping action stops the butt of the club from moving. So it kind of scoops, so you're losing compression. And more importantly, probably it's opening the club face and adding loft as well. So you're turning the seven iron, which I've got here, into an eight iron and potentially nine iron. So if you're not hitting your irons, um, the distance that you would really like, or you, um, or you hitting, or you, or you blah, blah, blah. let's start again. If you're not hitting your irons like you used to, if you lost a little bit of distance, what you're probably doing is you're probably adding loft and not releasing it correctly. This is going to do the opposite. This is going to do two things. It's going to decrease and de-loft the club. So you can turn this into a seven and a half, six iron. So it's going to be more controlled in the wind and you're going to hit it further without trying. And it's going to encourage the toe to roll. So it's putting draw spin on it as well. So a few little feel exercises for you to go away with. So, which I'm going to give you now. So, Remember, everything's off a good grip, so I'm gonna imagine we've got a neutral grip looking down here. So what I'd like you to do is take your club into your right hand, into your left hand, not your right hand, into your left hand. And I'd like you just to feel like you're just back and forth. So the club's gonna be pointed quite high up on the backswing. And then we've got, what we're gonna feel, you're gonna feel the palm of this left hand looking up. And if you had a glove on, it's looking down here. So we're keeping the back of that left wrist nice and straight. We're not cupping it and adding off. We're going to keep it nice and gently. So we're going to roll this hand. And if you're rolling the hand, obviously it's the only thing that's holding onto that golf club. What that's actually doing, it's actually rolling the face of the club as well. So it's going to put draw spin on it. So the club's going from what's probably going to feel open to close. Now if I did that into the, into the camera, there's one that's adding loft and scooping compared to the one that's keeping loft. So you can see the back of my left hand there is much more solid. So there's the release feel of the left hand. Now anything new, I always say it's going to feel weird, but still keep with it and you don't have to hit balls like that. It's just a practice swing only. You don't have to go mad, it might start aching, but you're not letting this left wrist break down at all. You're keeping it nice and straight. Only a half swing, we're not doing full swings. So let's add our right hand onto this. Obviously if you're right handed, if you're left handed, obviously just reverse all this. It'll be your right hand you need to feel. So feet quite close together, because we're not gonna do a full swing doing this. And you can just do some practice swings, feeling the same thing. So when you think about it, we're not gonna go full follow through here. We're just going to go 
half follow through. And I'll just finish off that sentence I said when you think about it, the more you rotate, the more your left arm's going to be out in front of you instead of the chicken wing behind you. So if you're suffering from the old chicken wing, this is a fantastic exercise. It's really going to exaggerate this feeling of this left arm and elbow out in front of you now. Obviously that's too much, but I'm exaggerating that. Let's go and hit one. Very, very slow. It's not a distance exercise and you should see this ball curving to the left. Unfortunately I'm indoors because it's still horrible in the UK right now. So I'm keeping nice and dry. Hopefully the sun will shine soon. But in some ways, when we don't have a result, so if you're hitting balls into a net, or you've got your own net at home, in the garden, or inside, it's a fantastic one because you're not really worried about what the ball's doing, you're just focusing on mechanics right now. Remember, it's not a golf course thought, it's just a mechanics of breaking it down nice and gently bently. Okay, roll, keeping it nice and straight. You can see here, there's no cupping of that left hand. Nice and straight, obviously that's exaggerated. Our arms and hands are getting pulled. My shoulders are getting pulled by our arms and hands. Nothing too strenuous, keep it nice and relaxed. Went through the hole. You can see my left arm and elbow is out in front of me, it's not behind me. And obviously that's not a golf swing, but keeping it slow motion even more, coming down and rolling this club you can see it's going to exaggerate this closing of the club face. And what it's doing is encouraging arm strength, it's natural speed, because what you're after is natural speed down the bottom. Remember, three types of release, arms and hands, body and lower half. This is really encouraging your, your hitting area, which I call left arm parallel, right arm parallel. Hip height to hip height, you're really trying to feel this kind of speed down the bottom without really doing too much. Obviously your knee can be pulled in a bit, but everything gets pulled along for the ride by these hands and arms, okay? So let's speed that up a little bit. Rotate, so very hard. In my time here at the academy, very rarely I see people over rotate it with their hands. Very rarely, because you haven't got enough time to do that. Remember we're coming from an 108, 180 degree rotation here and it's exaggerated you can see the follow through is going to be a little bit exaggerated because i haven't really moved my body yet but that's what it's all about as soon as you start introducing a bit more speed a bit more velocity into your body everything will start matching up and that's what golf's all about matching all these three ingredients main ingredients so if i introduce that feeling there into a follow through which basically means a little bit more rotation of the top half it's going to look something like that. There's the exaggerated one with the left arm, left hand, not breaking down, nice and firm. You can see that's really exaggerated. But if I introduce a bit of a turn, it obviously doesn't look that bad now. Still a little bit exaggerated, but introducing that, these elements, especially the body now, it doesn't look that exaggerated now, does it? And it's really the speed down the bottom with the club face rotating introducing a bit of draw. So not too narrow, not too wide of the stance, I mean, pardon me. You don't want the stance wide because that's going to stop the range of motion because you want a bit of kick in here, a bit of um, momentum going towards the target. Smallish backswing kick. I'm going to introduce a bit more body there so you can see I felt it. Rotate, so my hand's doing this. With my body turn. Really fantastic exercise. You'll be amazed how much natural speed. Now people come to me for lessons, will always hear me going about natural speed. It's not the, the amount of force going into it with your body and shoulders, especially, you don't want that. It's the amount of natural speed you're feeling down there without having to really feel like you're trying. It's back to the less is more video I did a couple of years ago. Less with your body, more down the bottom. But this is the way to release it. So, swinging towards the camera, the way to release it is your hand feeling like it's really like the back of the hand is looking down at the target. So I'm point, pointing that left hand now. Or if you had a logo of your glove, it's pointing towards the target halfway through. 
it's not doing the opposite and pointing up to the ground, up to the sky. So it might feel completely strained when you do that, but you can see hitting towards a target when I do that, try and miss anything. You can see now how out my hands are. It's a bit exaggerated, obviously, but if you want to turn that slice you may have into a draw, and especially if to do it with the correct ingredients of speed and compression, that's how you do it. Now, obviously, from the camera's perspective, I'm hitting towards it's exaggerated. But again, if I now do that with a bit of rotation, it now looks pretty normal. Remember, what you see down there is very hard with the naked eye, especially if you go like that. So remember, you're trying to blend that feeling, hands and arms, a little bit of knee kicking, really feel like your left hand is dominant whilst you're turning through as well. And if you suffer too much of a scoop, shoulders, keep very passive, short lock that follow through until it becomes natural and then you can introduce your normal rotation of your body. Fantastic exercise, fantastic. All those internal kind of feelings is a great way to introduce that power, that compression, without really hitting it any harder. But that'll be your feel. Your feel you won't be able to move, but there's definite speed and natural speed down the bottom. And you can see when I do that, I'm always hitting the mat. I'm always coming down on it, but I'm not trying to hit down on it with my shoulders. I'm just allowing the club to drop and release. So really this club in slow motion is going that way. That way. So I'm allowing this hand to rotate as much as I can. And obviously you want to stop here and do that hit and hold exercise and stop halfway, the club's closed and that's a good thing. But as soon as you introduce a bit of rotation of the body, the club won't be closed because you know you're stopping it from over rotating. So even if people draw the ball, this is even a great one for you because it's really going to give you the consistency and stop the toe rolling over as well. Right, so I hope that helps. Any questions, please let me know. I love hearing from you. I love hearing if it's working or if it's not, or you're not quite sure. Because remember, everyone's different. And I respect that because everyone's got different abilities, different time that people can practice, different physical capabilities. Um, everyone's different. So this is why some of these videos cater for some, not all. And you've got to just be careful. That's why any questions you might have, please put them down. I will um, answer them because you don't want to be doing it wrong. Because standing there practicing the wrong things is, um, well, it's always beneficial because you always learn, but you don't want to be going down a road that's quite hard to come back from, especially if you go out on the golf course and it doesn't work. So it can be quite demoralizing, but that's what I always say. If there's any questions, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. So from myself and the sleepy thread on the floor there, I'll see you on the next video. All the best and good golfing. Cheerio.